Farm for Profit Podcast. Take a listen, have a blast. Farm for Profit Podcast. Learn about farming while having a laugh. Farm for Profit Podcast. Today on the Farm for Fun show from the 2023 Farm Progress Show at the Suka booth. We meet up with an old friend and a multi-appearance guest on the show, but we're also joined by a new friend. Together, they formed an instant success podcast called Straightforward Farming, where there is no filter and no limits to what they talk about. Please welcome from South Central Illinois, Mr. Tony Reed, a.k.a. Growing Corn 2020, and Mr. Nick McCormick, a.k.a. Smoke Show 1466. Woo! And the crowd goes wild. Welcome, guys. Yeah, Tony, you're supposed to be a big draw for people. There's not a <laughs> yeah. single person. No, this is crazy. <laughs> kept, it, kept it a secret. Yeah, we did. A bit. That's um, all right. What's what's going on? Let's get okay. So we've everyone knows who Tony is, and I think a lot of people know who Nick is, but we've never had Nick on the podcast. So Nick, give us a little background about yourself. Um, born and raised about I don't know what 50, 60 miles from here, just a few miles from Tony. Known him since kindergarten. Um, grew up on a corn and soybean farm. Uh, we also have a repair shop, selling short line equipment and uh, doing farm repairs. Grew up tractor pulling. Um, went to the University of Illinois after high school. Came back to the farm and the business and been there ever since. So just got out of tractor pulling here a few years ago. We still work on them, but sold our tractor here a couple years ago. And uh, so I did that for longer than I care to remember, um, probably. But uh, yeah, farming bug bit me early on. and. I'm not walking away from that one. Right, right. What was the decision to give up the tractor pulling? Because I know that's how I started following you. Before you guys started a podcast was your tractors pulling stuff. Yeah. Somebody wanted to buy it. And the time to sell something is when somebody wants it. Okay. This guy had spoke for it clear back in 07 or 08. He told me, he's like, hey, if you ever want to do anything with that, let me know. So he happened to call a couple of winners ago, and he's like, hey, I'm either buying one, building one, something. I'd like to have yours. Would you sell it? I said, hold on a second, let me talk to dad and family or whatever, I'll call you back. We talked it over. My dad's not, you know, he's not getting any younger. I got young kids. I was taking time away from them. Um, I truly love it, but I'd rather spend time with them. I just saw a video last night, you know, you only get 19 years with your kids. 18 while they live with you, and then the, the year after that, or, you know, you get one cumulative year out of all the time with them after that. And I don't want to waste that being at some uh. county fair in northeast Ohio that, I like going to, but by the same token, I hate to I hate to miss all those sporting events and school stuff and right. time with them. So, did you ever let Tony drive your tractor? No, nah, he's a green guy. Yeah, but you yeah. didn't. You still didn't even let him get on it. And... Now nah, he's hard on stuff. Yeah, <laughs> he's hard on stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's a little out of my league there. I, I I wouldn't do it if he asked me. That's not my cup of tea. I like watching it, like going, but yeah, I'm not driving. Even my dad never drove it. I was the only one really? that ever that ever drove it. Yeah. It yeah. almost sounds like owning a boat. Like, the two Pretty happiest much. days is well, buying it and selling it. Like, I enjoyed all the time. <laughs> I really enjoyed working on it, to be honest with you. It's just, it was a huge time commitment. I really don't know how I ever did it. Right. You know, think I'm going to have all this extra time now that we've got rid of this thing, and I don't have that extra time. <laughs> <laughs> it's odd. You find ways to fill it pretty quick. Yes. And yes. Did your tractor have a name? Nasty stuff, yeah. Yeah? Did yeah. the uh, new owner keep the same name? It, it, it went with it. I don't know what he's going to do for gotcha. sure yet. Yeah, I told him he could have it if he wanted it. Um, I have at this time I have no intention of building another one. If I do, it'll be years from now. And so, well, you better watch out. The new trend is that kids just move back home and stay home. So you might have like forty years back in your house. Well, I mean that may be that may be, and that's okay too at some level. Like I don't, know, I like my kids. I'm one of those weird parents. I actually enjoy my there kids. There you so, go. So that's fine. Yeah, that. We're at that weird stage in our lives with young kids. You know, I'm nine and seven for my daughters. And, yes, I enjoy them right now. A couple of years ago, that I, I probably wouldn't have answered the same way. You know? <laughs> and I'm sure a couple of years from now, I'm not going to answer the same way. Right. My right. kids are getting to the age, or at least one of them is getting to the age where I know less and she knows more. Uh, it's funny how that's working for me. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to break that habit. I, it's not going that well, but I'm trying. Well, Tony, you got a new shop. Your kid's got a hot rod four wheeler. Maybe you just uh, soup it up and now four wheeler pulls or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what we could do. He, <laughs> he's used a shop more than I have now. Oh, geez. Every night when I go in there, he's got that four wheeler scattered in a million pieces, <laughs> putting a clutch in it here and brakes on it there. And so, yeah, he's loving every minute of it. Yeah, those are fun toys. I got a neighbor kid that 
likes riding dirt bikes and racing dirt bikes. But then he said two stories to where he went out and did his hot laps and something broke during the hot laps and didn't even actually get to race. Yeah. 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 But, no, that that's very interesting. So, Nick, how – you said you you love the farming, never going to get out of the farming side. No, of it. no, don't have any plans to. The bank might tell me different. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully not, right? Yeah, hopefully not. But how'd that start? Is that something that has been in your family for a while? Yeah. Or how'd that go? Yeah, where my brother lives, where the home farm is at, my family's owned that for over a hundred years. Um, so yeah, we've I've just I didn't know any different. You know, we grew up helping dad on the farm, and he had the shop to run. So my brother and I have done the lion's share of the farming since we were old enough to walk, you know, really, like dad would come out in the evenings and this, that, and the other, but through the day and whatnot, it was, it was on my brother and I. So, yeah, it's, it's been great. I love farming. Tony just got handed a, I assume, a, a, another Polaroid? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Confident uh, children. I don't know. <laughs> if you could see Tony blush, it's what he did. He <laughs> looked at that and went, whoa. whoa. Yeah. Uh-huh. 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 Yep. Maybe it's a check to be on the podcast or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? yeah. yeah, you guys didn't get yours? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh-huh. That's pretty oh, good. Shit. So as you guys are hanging out here at the Farm Progress Show, what's, uh, what's on the agenda? Nick, you get to roam around. Tony, you, you don't get to go nowhere? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll find one spot. That's where I'll be. But, <laughs> yeah, no, I, a lot of this stuff here, I guess we're fortunate where Nick and I live. There are so many machinery dealers around. A lot of this stuff you can look at any day of the week. That's exactly what's said here. In fact, some of the stuff probably come from the local dealers by us. So, you know, some areas of the country, they don't get to see some of this stuff. You know, they're fascinated with combines or or whatever where, yeah, there's nothing here that I just got to make sure I go see. Is there any cool innovation, though, that you want if you had an open checkbook that you like, I I want to implement that on my farm? I don't know. If, If anything, it would maybe be like on the drone spray inside of things, possibly. I don't know. Yeah, we were talking to a, a friend of ours on TikTok last night that came up. He's from the Boot Hill of Missouri, and he was talking. He was here looking at drones because they have a spray drone, and they desiccate soybeans with their spray drone. He said they were hiring a plane to do it, and they were missing spots by trees and houses and things like that, so they bought this spray drone, and apparently it just gets everything in the field, refill every seven and a half minutes or so yep, yep. and lets them harvest soybeans you know at 13 percent moisture instead of letting them drop you know wait until they're not green anymore and letting yep. them get to nine yeah. percent yeah so. don't you guys think in 10 years the spray drones will be the size of the airplanes now you know what i mean right where you're not refilling every seven minutes or they're gonna get know. bigger and bigger i yes. mean they've already upped the limits from what was it like 60 pounds to 125 pounds or something you know yeah. so that's doubles your capacity and yeah hell they can lift people now you see yeah. on tiktok yeah, yeah. I, th- I think you'll see it more automated and just more small ones so uh as we you know think of like infrastructure for like tractors like we're as yeah. wide as we can go to drive down the road whereas what but i mean without changing the infrastructure how can we do more with the same amount it's just more of them just like uh, you know many hands make quick work right sure, yeah. well many drones make a quick field to, to spray so i think you'll just have like a a, a base with uh, four or five that automatically go out and just spray little spots at one time. And I think it would be more cost-effective to, to not build one huge power machine, bigger blades, bigger, you know, and just have more little ones. Yeah. We, we've still got to get capacity up because refueling or rebattering every seven and a half minutes, you're going to have to run like a NASCAR pit stop yeah. if yeah. you want to keep the drones running. Otherwise, it's going to just come back and, and yeah. hover. I was talking with some friends the other day that uh, his boy is running a spray business. I think he's just working for somebody, but in... I forget, and I forget the exact days, but let's just say 45 days he sprayed 5,000 acres. And it's like, that sounds like a lot with a drone, but in the realm of things, it was talking, you know, with a ground machine, right. that's just yep. a couple of days. So yeah. I think they got to get it going faster or some way to speed right. up the process. Because, you know, fungicide on soybeans is a pretty narrow window. I don't have right. six weeks to do this. So hmm. That's the interesting. I've heard the horror stories. You don't usually hear the good ones. Yeah. So you get more of the horror stories to where maybe it's, not great communication and all of a sudden the drone loses connection and then it just goes down it wants to land so one landed in a creek so it just went didn't have the sensor to know that that down wasn't the right place to go another one was coming back and went beyond a home and ran into a power line so i've i've only heard the bad stories about the technology but that's only going to get better right basically the same thing I did with every drone I've tried to fly <laughs> <laughs> so yeah what about you Nick what are you here to see oh a little bit of everything I'm going to check in with some vendors companies I sell for Capello Salford etc check out the other stuff that I 
can't afford but want and uh, just take it all in, talk to a few people and get back to work, I guess. All right, take note. We've got to send those guys a bill. <laughs> <laughs> so do you, have, do you have employees working for you out of your shop? Not at the moment, no. It's just my father and I. Yep. Just yeah, a, my, well, I guess my mother, too. Two, yeah. Three-person operation? Yeah, same as everybody. Like, you can't find anybody for the most part. So. Right. So yeah. I, I know we're at a fun show, guys, but I'm curious because we haven't had you on the podcast. If, so Farm Progress, all this sweet equipment, it's like you just said, everything you want but you don't necessarily need or can't afford. What, uh, what do you think, uh, for our listeners, what, out of all this cool stuff, what makes them the most money? New planter, new combine, new building, grain bins, uh, technology, microbials. I mean, there is so much tech here. Is there something that you think has a bigger ROI than others? Just your opinion as farmers? Boy, I, me personally, it's such a broad spectrum. It's, I don't know how I could set. I'd really have to think of to sit down and pick just one. You know, I mean, because like you say, it just goes on and on and on and on from fertilizer to high-speed blenders to whatever. So I figured it'd be the Keystone dealer. You well, just yeah, stop drinking Keystone. Yeah, that's, 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 okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> Here's how farming works, though. Like, if you want something to pencil, you make it pencil, right? So yeah. I, can tell, I can tell you that I'm in the market for a grain bin. I'm going to souk up. I'm going to buy a new grain bin. Yep. And I can show you the math where this is the most profitable thing I can do on this facility. This is the number one item I can pick out, and that's what's going to make me the most money. Gotcha. Or you can tell me that I need to go see a lender, and that'll be the best thing that I do is get the proper lending for the said project. Like, I got you. You know. That's yeah. the thing. You can always convince yourself. Sitting on the other side of the desk, you're right. Every time I come in with a someone comes in with a loan er, loan request, it's the best thing ever. Like yeah. this is <laughs> why haven't people been doing this? Why doesn't everybody do this? It can't fail. Yeah. Yeah. And it's my job to shoot the holes in it. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's sort of fail. like a new pickup truck. Well, I can't afford not to trade. Well, yeah. the one you got's got four thousand miles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna be okay either way. I've never found one of those can't afford not to trade deals. I would like yeah, to. I need one of those. Wait. I, I think what makes the most money for the companies, I think it would probably be like the proprietary products and the microbiologicals. Those guys are just brewing up bugs yeah. and nothing. But Nick and I have often talked, you know, farming is such a moving target that, you know, you can do something on your farm. I can do the exact same thing. I didn't see any results. You said it was the greatest thing in right. the world. And everything, it's, it's all just this giant moving target. And like right. Nick said, if you think you can justify it and make your paper show it. Yeah then it don't really matter, I guess. Well, you talk about that on your TikTok with every no-till guy that's out there that uh, you get in an argument yeah. with is, hey, this farm I know better than all of you. I'm telling you, this is what works yeah. on this farm. Yeah. Yep, and like I said that one day, everybody, these high-speed planters and precision planting, I'm not knocking any of that stuff. It works exactly right. as advertised. It's great stuff. But every plot data that I get is planted with a John Deere 7000. It's yeah. better than all the technology that's running up and down the field. So somebody's lying somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> well, we had that conversation with Brian Adams. You know, we brought it up that you know the two of you went back and forth on TikTok. Or, or I can't remember if it was in person. Whichever it was, just the fact of, yeah, how much technology works. And some of the comments we got back is, I think one of the number one responses was row shutoffs. Right. That, was, that was one of the fastest things that people had seen pay. But yeah. if you have a square field... It's probably not the same as if you're no. planting someplace that has a bunch of contours sure. and, and really could pay for itself. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I can't believe the amount of golf carts that are here. Well, that's probably <laughs> why it took so long to get here. How long? Okay, from where you guys are at, how long did it take for you to get into the show? Uh, from when you house, left home? My house to the parking lot was an hour. Wasn't it right? when, yeah, when we got stopped right. by a train down here for a few minutes. And yeah. What not? So. I think we took an hour from our hotel. Yeah. We were six miles away, and it took us an hour. Holy cow. You just come in the wrong way. We, we had two of. I mean, it went down to one lane. And you there was go. a car accident, though. There was a car accident. And we're only going like two mile an hour, so I don't know how they crushed the bumper on the if back of that. If you hang on to one of those drones, it could have flown We should. Yeah. We <laughs> talked about we it. We talked about <laughs> it. We were like, if we could just fly right past them all. Is this your first time in Decatur? In Decatur, yeah. Okay. What a beautiful city. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what did you guys do? These people in Illinois are... <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, you have slots in every building. Slots. Slot machine. Gambling. Slot yeah. machine. Yep. Oh, yeah. I thought you said something else at first. So, yeah. <laughs> There's those two. There's those two. Yeah. I should have put the headphones on. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Yeah, you're Everybody, right. I mean, gas yeah. stations, bar. I Laundromats. Mean, yeah. Yep. Yeah. You, you drive down the street and you look at something that should be an apartment building and it says two stories of slots. Yep. Yeah. It slots. Is a, it is a huge big deal now. Yep. Yeah. So, I'm is trying, it, is it huge revenue? To, I mean, can they all make money? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's in fact, money. it's got to the point where a lot of cities have put local ordinances on that we're only going to allow x amount of machines in the whole city because you would have them everywhere and then nobody's making any money per yeah, se yeah. you know 
uh, it's just like the lottery. The best way to win the lottery is become a government because mm-hmm. you win every single week. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's a good point because we're trying to figure out what's the competitive advantage. You know, you've got all these gas stations, and they're trying to sell a different product or have a better coffee. You have a slot machine that you put money into and you pull down on a lever. Yeah. What? Nothing. The experience is not any different. But how, how do you get somebody into your building? I do not understand it. You're probably talking to the wrong two guys here. You, you probably, <laughs> I know you won't see me sitting in one, and I've never I seen Tony never, sitting in one. I'm 43 so. years old, and I have never, ever in my life put a dollar in any of them at a bar, any of that. No, nope, me either. Never I, done it. See, ever. my mom, she loves it, and I don't know why. Like, she'll sit there and pull it all day long, you know, and she pays like, plays like pennies. And she's yeah. like, well, I either won 100 or lost 100, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yep. And she, we delivered something to Kansas, uh, that mill, down to Kansas, and she wanted to stop in Kansas City on the way back, and... We walked in there. It was like a Friday or Saturday night, and I just it looked like death in there, like yeah, it, like yeah. just zombies just sitting there pulling. Yeah. I'm like, I didn't play a dang thing. I'm like, no, this ain't my vibe. I'm no. out. <laughs> and it's sort of like the lottery tickets at the gas station. Most of the people sitting there probably don't have yeah. a whole heck of a lot of business yeah. sitting there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I see you got your uh, Tony Reed for president shirt on. I'm, I'm guessing uh, with all the gambling rules, you just didn't want to be governor of Illinois that, and yeah. just straight for yeah. president. We, we rode Illinois, Claire. I mean, it's well, beyond fiction. He's in too good a shape to be governor of I, Illinois. I, I, yeah, well, yeah. We've got restrictions yeah. on that. Yeah. How many write-in votes do you think we'll, we'll actually get for that? I, I've <laughs> thought about just to be stupid, to just put something out on TikTok. Let's just shoot for 500,000 nationwide. Yeah. Just, just to see, see if, if you can, can, can get it in. How much to come up on a Fox News poll yeah. that you're at yeah. .001% for president? Yeah. I think we need you and, <laughs> you was it, was and Justin compete and see who can get more yeah, yeah. there you go yeah <laughs> and that's when tony comes up missing after all this though yeah the wigs are gonna be like yep. hey who's this guy yeah we gotta get yep. him out of irs this, audits so. everything because yeah, yeah, right. wasn't there there was a write-in candidate and i can't remember what local election it was but had more votes than anybody else and that's when d's nuts started isn't that <laughs> is that, <laughs> isn't right? that how it was d's nuts d's Don't nuts is how i think you might be right yeah yeah i think we could do it we just need to make sure this podcast airs before, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. before election. So, day. did you listen to the debate last week? I did not. No, I, I stay clear out of politics. I, I used be to all over your constituency there. <laughs> yeah, I, I used to listen to that stuff, watch it, kept up on it, and anymore, I don't even want to hear it. I don't want to see it. I just you I don't should care. go. You should go live during the next debate, and when something comes up, you answer the. You question. have to answer the question. <laughs> there you go. That's there a you good go. idea. That is a good idea. <laughs> well, somebody needs to because what little bit I caught of it. Nobody answered any of the actual questions. <laughs> right. They never do. You know? We can just do it right here. We'll be the moderators. and yeah. just all bicker. <laughs> you, yeah. you can be CNN, Corey. I'll be. <laughs> yep. We'll see how we get along. That's the job I actually want for Tony. I want him to moderate the next presidential. There election. you oh. go. But Somebody will thinking. actually call him out on it. Yeah. Nope. And I get to control yeah. the mic. You know, you don't get to just keep talking and talking yeah. and go over your time. And you didn't answer the question. You know, you got three seconds to get this answered. Excuse me, Mr. Or, President. Excuse me. Yeah. yeah. And Mr. the President. only answers you can use are yes or no. I, you know, when I ask a question, I don't need some 45 minute answer. That's right. It's a yeah. yes or no question. Yeah. Uh, wow. I'm loving this. We should do that. Yeah. Right. I think that would be great. So how did you guys meet? Were you guys friends from kids? Yep. Yeah. Kindergarten. 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 Yep. Yeah. I thought I remembered that. Yeah. How did you guys all meet? Yeah. Let's turn the tables here. Yeah. <laughs> we've, uh, we've only shared that a couple of times. Dave, Dave and I were at an auction. Bas- basically new to the community in our equal professional fields him as an auctioneer realtor and me as a banker and uh that sounds like something in cahoots hey you go sell this land let me <laughs> yeah. finance it. yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's how it started it is yeah. how it started we can't we can't back away from that that's exactly how yeah, really yeah how this started it was hey i like the way you're doing business i like the way you're doing business we don't have anybody else to do business with sure uh let's have coffee have lunch um but then we started the farm for profit conference it was called the Ames ag summit to begin with and Dave was one of the speakers, and Corey was one of the attendees. So that that conference was the first time all three of us were in the same room. Really? Yep. Or mm-hmm. an auction? No, it was. Well, I I can't remember if the auction was before that or not. But you tried to get my business. You were at an auction. We were at the log ca- cabin at a land auction yeah. in Slater, and you were thinking that I had money to buy land. I was just there watching. <laughs> <laughs> And he tried to get my business, tried to get my business, and finally I gave it to him, and then he left that bank. See, well, that's, <laughs> that, that's the tough part is uh, Tanner always has a statement. He says, can I be your backup? Like, 
everybody already has their go-to guy. Sure. They already have, well, everybody already had their go-to auctioneer. Everybody had their go-to banker, but we, we were not the go-to, so we became the backup and said, well, we'll be each other's go-to if yeah. we have, you know, somebody, well, I'll send them your way, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, yeah, it's kind of how that uh, Yeah, you don't get run off the farm if, if you say you just want to build a relationship. I just yeah. want to be there if your yeah. guy quits, if he leaves, if something happens. You don't usually get sent away or a direct no. Yeah. Then it's... It's less intimidating. Right. You yeah. haven't pulled into Tony's unannounced, clearly. That's right. Yeah. 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 right. <laughs> I've watched his TikToks. Yeah. I, I, I assume it's just like farming. You know, if you're trying to, I mean, you're trying to get more farm ground, but you don't want to step on the wrong toes right. either. Yeah, it's political. It, it's political, but it, I'll be your backup. Hashtag like, hey, backup it, farmer. Hashtag backup farmer. Yeah. 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 That's I know around, uh, or go ahead. That's looked down upon, too, <laughs> when you call someone's landlord. But, but. Yeah. <laughs> around us, it seems like bankers do switch jobs a lot like they don't stay at the same bank they stay in the same profession but and it's maybe not as bad now but gosh i know there for a while for a little bit there it it was was pretty just pretty like musical chairs it's that it's that tough balance of when you think you do the job well but it's a job that people hold for their entire careers you know you don't yeah quit banking because of bad knees or or something along those lines you end up with the person that's directly ahead of you in the leadership role is there until they shouldn't be anymore and probably just like in farming should have retired but they didn't yeah so yeah you go to another bank yep you get yeah. a get a promotion by yep. switching companies and yeah. i would assume you know farm lending for what eight to ten years now has probably been fairly simple it wasn't like the 80s oh, where everybody's coming in and losing piece everything and you know Corey will tell you it's the easiest as farming he's ever been <laughs> you just plant something and yeah. right sell it yeah. right are That's you one right. of those predators Predatory lenders. Is that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's keep my, keep my name off that list. Yeah. <laughs> That's just as bad as the other predatory list. Mm, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but you're talking backup farmers, backup bankers made me think about yesterday when we were setting up here. It was fascinating how these guys in these telehandlers can't drive forwards. All no. they did was they beep, did. beep, yeah. beep. I mean, there's no reason you couldn't have turned around in the intersection or decided oh. to go forward. <laughs> yeah. We watched the guy back all the way to the exit. Right, yeah, all the way to the show. I well, I don't know. they've probably been watching truck drivers, and you can't park a truck just by pulling it forward. You have to back up afterwards. Yeah. Then pull it forward like that far. <laughs> There's no way a semi with trailer will just follow that truck and you can park it. Nope. You can't swing out wide enough for that. You've got you to gotta back it up, then pull the air brakes. So those guys probably been watching all the semis come in, and they, now they know. I was trying to give them benefits of the doubt. You know, is it clear line of sight to look backwards? versus over your load, but everything that these guys had on their forks was not Yeah, you could see over it. Yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, it just, you watch things progress. Yeah. Just like when you watch people drive and you watch uh, all the little pet peeves that we all get. Right, yeah. Yep. So, Nick, there's a uh, Mrs. Growing Corn 2020. Is there a Mrs. Smoke Show? Yes, there is. I've been married for, uh, that's to be my That's what he named his year. tractor after. Yeah, it'll be 20 Nasty years stuff. here in December. <laughs> so, yeah. I have a lovely wife, Kelly, that uh, for some reason took me in. I don't know why. Oh, fair enough. So, you yeah. bring the girls, both of you? No. Nope. Nope. Stayed home. No. Somebody to get the kids to school. Yep. We left early. It is so. school time. Forgot about that. It is. So. So how did the uh, Straightforward Farming podcast come about? Oh, really, there was just a lot of people on TikTok. Once that all started taking off, oh, you guys ought to do a podcast. You should do a podcast. And I don't know. We kind of kicked it around, thought, I don't know that anybody would really listen to it. And so we thought, heck, we're sitting around drinking beer talking anyway. We might as well record it and see if anybody listens to it. So we did, and here we are. Yeah. So. I think we sponsored the first 10 shows or I something like that. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Had to give you something. It yep. wasn't much, but... We appreciate it, though. You yeah. guys uh, yeah. you haven't put a show out for a while, though. Uh, I just put one out last week. Oh, did you? Yeah. Okay. Wow, what a good listener you are. Yeah. 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 yeah you sound just like our wives. Yeah. Yeah. The times that they've said it on us, they're like, well, you should do this and this and this. They're like, well, you clearly don't listen to the show because yeah. we already do all that. Yeah. So. Right. <laughs> you yeah. just don't get to hear it right now. Exactly. So. They got their own show. They do. They do. Yep. They do have their own. So are they more consistent? No, they're probably no, they're, less. They're less than us. Yeah. Yeah. So in your new building, did you put a podcast studio all padded and everything and take no, all the advice? No, not from- saying we won't. I just haven't got that far. <laughs> yet, I got so. you. Yeah, first is going to be the green screen for his weather forecast. I was going to say yeah. world's yeah. largest yeah. green I screen. Come back. I just told the wife last night, because, and I've always been this way, and I don't, I don't know why, but so you know, we got this hurricane headed for Florida. And I just absolutely love when the Weather Channel goes to 24-hour hurricane coverage. <laughs> and I told, I mean, I just, that's just all I turn on, just leave it on 24-7. I told the wife, I said, I need to do a weather forecast. Tell these Floridians what's coming so 
maybe have to wheel one out here. I don't know. You guys may not caught all his previous weather forecasts from back in the day, but the weather forecasts were we some watched, of his best. I we watched some because he was back when he was a tabby cat. Yep. Yeah. I watched yep. some of those back yeah. there. Those yep. skits were good. Yeah. <laughs> yep, the construction days, that day we built that shed. Yep. Yeah, all those were good. What are those guys see. doing now? Uh, they all kind of scattered. One works for John Deere up in Moline uh, in the, the corporate side, and uh, one just lives half a mile from me. He's an uh, electrician. And, yeah, everybody just kind of scattered and got girlfriends and everything else. And that's it. So. Gotcha. How's the uh, crops looking down here? I know you were talking on TikTok. It's pretty short and some Yeah, spots. it's it's pretty rough. I'm I'm the cutoff right where I live. I cannot buy a rain. I mean, you go five miles north, five miles south, totally dead. Which still ain't good in those directions, but it's substantially better than what I've got. But I mean, I'll have a lot of corn. I don't think I'll make 120 bushel. And I'm I'm not being dramatic. I yeah. mean, it really won't will it, Nick. I mean, it's, it's there's bad. a dry stretch in there, which is kind of rare, honestly. Yeah. Um, if you get down to where we farm, normally if it rains there, it rained everywhere. This year we've got way more rain than I have at at home, which will be close to where Tony lives. So you guys that, are how far from each other? Two and a half miles. Yeah, about yeah. two, two and a half miles. Two, two and, a half and then his farm is south of there. Then. Okay. Yeah. So do you think that's just this year? I mean, I've been hearing negative talk. I, not that the, the tenor has changed, but what's your guys' outlook five years? Is, I mean, is it uh, something we're going to see more and more of? Is it going to be rougher for farmers? Uh, boy, it's, it's so hit and miss. I, and I do look at, I think weather always balances itself out. And we've actually had above normal rainfall for five, six, seven years on end. I think we're going to go back to what I would call a normal summer. It's going to be hot and dry. I mean, when I was a kid, you parked a lawnmower yeah. the 1st of June. You didn't get back on it till August, where mm-hmm. the last five years, if you didn't mow once a week, you had grass waist high, you know. So right. I, I think we're just going to go back to normal. I've only been farming 10 years, but I, I can't remember in my lifetime the heat and how long we've had it in the end of August, yeah. right? Like, you know. Four or five days long of hundred degree plus heat. I mean that that zapped us pretty good, and we haven't had yeah. the moisture. I don't I don't know if the beans are going to fill out, and I, and the corn is actually prematurely dropping their ears. Yeah, that ain't good. So my expectations yeah. have dropped. I think we'll still have average, but yeah. I was hoping for above average. Yeah, you know I've talked to people from all over the U.S. when I was at uh, Ag PhD days up in Baltic South Dakota. I mean I have talked to people from everywhere, and every single person I've talked to. Hey, what's your corn look like? Uh, average, maybe a little bit. I haven't ran into a single person anywhere that says, man, we got a really good crop coming on. I mean, right. everybody is average yeah. to slightly below average. See, as we've traveled, we went up to Wisconsin and some other places. As we've traveled, I, I actually thought Iowa had some of the better looking corn. I think in places, you get up into like eastern, northeast Iowa, pretty good in some spots. They've gotten some rains. I don't know. It's, it's going to be extremely variable. This year, from what I've driven around, it's going to be very spotty yeah. there's going to be small pockets that are going to be good and, and larger areas that aren't so did the pro farmer tour come through your neck of the woods or do they go north no they come about bloomington ain't it yeah so they just don't, they don't get that north south. of here a little ways farming south of here doesn't matter in illinois right yeah. <laughs> it's like south of 80 and <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. well, yeah. well because there was a lot of illinois farmers that were complaining pretty early with yeah, lack yeah. of moisture right and yeah I, and i look at the whole state because pro farmer come in at what 193 for illinois i yeah, think that it was sounds right. it was pretty high and I look at a state average as just like a yield monitor going through a, through the field. You're carrying a real good average, and the first bad spot you hit, you'll knock 10 bushel off. Right. Yeah. And I, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, Corey said that before, that zeros add up a lot faster than 250s. Yes, yeah. Yeah. they do. <laughs> yeah. Yes, they do. You know, and if you get south of here where there's actually trees in Illinois, the last few years we've had the benefit. We've had enough moisture that our good spots weren't, any better than I've ever seen. Weren't as good in some cases, but the perimeters were so much better. Right. You know, and that makes a huge difference in your average. Where this year, where it was dry again for a long period of time, there's yeah. going to be 16 rows of nothing around there. Right. So that just kills us from here south, you know. It's about par for the course. Tony actually puts some tile in and then it's dry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's your I, fault. Yeah, my brother and a whole I, 80. Yeah, yeah, put a whole 80 in. I'm like, that didn't rain since. That's yeah. why the Buckeye guys, they feel bad. Yeah, like, there. Exactly. Is, that, is that what it is? Yeah. That tall guy told me to dry that field up. He was right. Yeah, he was right. dry ever yeah. since. So. It'll pay dividends yeah. when it does start raining again. Yeah. Tile, tile, exactly. You can tell everybody. You, that's what he did. Put tile on the ground. Your field's never been drier. Yeah, yeah. just right. stop exactly there. Right. Don't give any more explanation. <laughs> yeah. So as you get to go to these shows and travel around, Tony, you get to meet a lot of people. How how much of your audience is young? 
Right. That is a very surprising statistic, and I tell a lot of people this. I get as many, if not more, 70-year-old men that come up and say, I watch your stuff every day as what I do 18, 20-year-old kids. It's absolutely mind-blowing. Well, that's your demographic, isn't it? Crotchety old. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Sorry. I I just, I would have never guessed that in a million years. I mean, uh, you know, when you look at the guy that comes up to you, you wouldn't even think he would have a smartphone, you know, but they watch it every day, so. Yeah, because that's something that we get asked a lot is we've got a lot of young listeners, which surprised us that it's an educational podcast. Sure, it's entertaining when we try to have these Farm for Fun shows, but a lot of the time, the, the topics are very, very educational. You, you have to want to listen. Yeah, yeah. But we get emails and text messages all the time about how can I get started? How can I get into farming? What can I do to get to just get going? And we, we don't have any magic cream, silver bullets. I think somebody did. Wasn't one of the answers uh, uh, just marry uh, somebody rich with a lot of farmland? Right. Wasn't, yeah. wasn't that their answer That's for success? Right. That's your best strategy. Well, and it's so different across demographics. You know, if you're a guy who farms in Kansas and raises 100% wheat, that's totally different than a guy in Decatur, Illinois. I mean, it, you know, it's it's such a moving target. And just the machinery is vastly different. The cost of production, it just yeah, you, you really can't make a one-size-fits-all policy on that. Yeah, and to tell them, you know, we don't have anything good to say for advice because to tell them, yeah, just go buy a tractor and you'll find work because yeah. you can tell a guy to go buy a skid loader and there's always skid loader workout. I mean, you can, right. it seems like if you get into the contractor trades, go buy yourself a tool chest full of tools, there's always going to be work. Yeah. But yeah. to say, go buy a tractor and you'll find a farm to farm, yeah. it doesn't not work the, like that. That's right. No. I so think. It, Gavin probably and, and Ethan probably said, you know, you gotta, you gotta start out small and farm the stuff that no one wants to farm, the little, you know, yeah. patches of crap. Yeah. Yep. And uh, And the bad part is know. like where Nick and I are, it it don't matter. I mean the big guys, they'll farm five acres here. You know, it's so cutthroat. I mean they it don't really? bother them. They'll they'll farm it all. I mean it takes longer to unfold the planter. Yeah, it does, yeah. but in some of those. I mean, we yeah. can all name several guys with a 24-row planter, wheel into a 10-acre field, planter right. so go you, on. You know, do, yeah. I have a neighbor, uh, Jerry, and Jerry is always, well, I, I, they should give that to that young guy because he's been working hard and, you know, do that. And so there is still some sentimental attachment to help the younger generation. But it's a business, and it, it's a monetary business. So is, do you think we've lost all of that? Is there still guys, that, hey, you know, you're doing a good job, young man. I'm just going to give you the farm, or is... Uh, the mighty dollar taking over the sincerity of uh, relationships. I personally think the dollar will generally win. Will win. Every, I mean, I'm not saying there ain't rare circumstances, but generally, that's where it goes, from what I see. I mean, there still are some genuine people out there, but on the grand scale, I mean, the guys that are farming big acres wouldn't be farming big acres if we were. Yep. If we were wrong about that, you know what and I mean? And you can't like, blame them for wanting their retirement or their, you know, yeah. their, their purse exactly. in the deal. Yeah. Was that the loudest side-by-side you've that ever was. heard? Ban Kawasaki diesel side-by-sides? <laughs> yeah. Wait, no muffler? <laughs> Straight piped? Straight piped Kawasaki. <laughs> I thought they were starting that pull That's like that wheel there. down at uh, National Farm Machinery Show, the, the push carts for trash. Yeah. That oh went around gosh. and it squeak, yeah. squeak, yeah. squeak. Like, <laughs> there are... Tons of vendors down here with lube. We should just go get it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so you said you got a lot of big guys down there competing for everything. What's what's cash rent doing in your area? A lot you, of cowboys. You, you never really hear. And we're yeah. not not we're not as bad as like you know Champaign, Douglas County, you know Decatur area as far as that. But I mean, it's on the rise as it is everywhere. Right. I mean, you know? you'll hear some three hundreds. That's not the norm or the standard. Yeah. No. I mean. I'm gonna say what two to two fifty probably rents most of it. Yeah, you know. You hear that, Dave? I I did. I was I was just setting up to ask a question. Though we talked with some guys last night, and they asked me why don't you have cash rent auctions? And I've hesitated. Uh, but if it gave Corey, maybe you know, maybe as a farm manager, I only gave the two, three big guys, whatever you know, that we know have the financial ability, the wherewithal, the right equipment, and I won't have to worry about it. But it maybe it cuts out younger guys, as we're as Tanner's talking, younger guys. Uh, do I have cash rent auctions to give everybody the same fair, uh, f- fair uh, transparent playing field, or? Are we still in the persona that, hey, we don't want anybody knowing what we're paying, so uh, we don't want the transparency? Right. Yeah, there's a lot of that. Guys are pretty tight-lipped on it. But 
because you can bite yourself. You know, the landlord doesn't necessarily understand that there's a difference in the ground. So if you get to throwing it around too big on this really good piece, let's say, well, then all of a sudden your other ones want, want more too, you know. So you got to be a little cautious. See, there. that surprised me. You're only 250 to 300 because everything I hear in Illinois is four to 500. Uh, probably you, about by you, Champagne. You like got to understand, though, we're, we're the Mason Dixon line. Like from where my shop is yeah. north, it just gets better and better and better till you get to the top of Illinois. And from where my shop is south, it just gets worse and worse and worse. Like, yeah, a lot just, of wheat grown. We can see where, where, where the glacier <laughs> stopped going, going home from work. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. We can, honestly, we can't. Yeah. Like, the hill just north of the town that Tony and I live by is where the glacier stopped. Yep. And that's all coincidentally where the black dirt yeah. stopped. So this dirt here is 500,000 years old. Our dirt's 4 million years old. Yeah. Huh. So, <laughs> yeah. It's tired. Yeah. yeah. It's tired. So I mean, do you guys not have rocks because there's no glacier? We don't have yeah. rocks. We every now and again, I'll pick one up the size of a baseball yeah. every two or three years. We don't have any rocks. We that's also a- don't need lights at night, though, because the, the ground's so light. That the moon reflection <laughs> coming yeah. off the ground, you can pretty much. So a true light. harvest moon actually yeah. works. Yeah. Abs- absolutely. <laughs> That's I mean, cool. it is That's a noticeable change. That's the first time change. I've heard that. That's good. Yeah, there's <laughs> right. a noticeable change between there. Like you can you can see it with your own eyes. And as far as rent down our way, there is a lot more CRP pollinator programs and this okay. and that. And if a guy can make two, three hundred, or two fifty, three hundred bucks an acre on that, then that's what he wants for rent. Because if you don't want to take it yeah. for that, I'll just put it in CRP. Yeah. So there was several years ago, people were taking prime, yeah, whole fields yeah. out of our area. 360, 340, yeah. you know, it's like, and they're like, no, I'm just not going to deal with anyone. And it yeah. it ruined a lot of opportunities. Like, you could have rented that to a younger guy. Yeah. yeah. Once again, get the government involved, and now yeah. it's. Yeah, they artificially raised their cash rent. Right. With yes. some program that may or may not have any bearing on reality. But it's anyway. convenience. You don't have to worry about it. I mean, yeah. why do we pay more for uh, coffee at uh, Starbucks than we do wherever? Because it's convenient. You know, it's going to be the same every time, et cetera. Well, that's what they're doing. Yeah. Convenient. They get the same check every time. It's guaranteed, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And the CRP program is not really for conservation, I don't think. No. There's some buffer strip, but it's more yeah. of a set aside acres so we don't plant so we 95 don't million produce. acres of yeah. corn. Yeah. Yes. yeah. <laughs> so. And where we're at, you know, from there south, the fields aren't very big. You know, there's not very many 80s south of town, no. honestly. No. You know, it's broke up. You look at an old plat map, and they used to be, but now it's all pretty small fields. Is so that because that of it down to, it's all got transition split up over, yep. over yeah. the years? What's the smallest denomination? I mean, like, at some point you got to stop, right, Dave? Like, you know, it went from 160s to 80s to 40s. Do yeah. you keep going? I, I mean, you can break it into quarter, 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 or half of the north, half of the north quarter. Yeah. You just read it backwards, you know. But yeah. like our county, Story County, yeah. you can't go – they won't let you subdivide a 40 unless you get a subdivision plan. Correct. Yep. Yeah. So we have an urban sprawl plan that basically says you can't just build one little acreage on one acre. You you have to have at least 40 because they want to keep it as farm ground. Yeah, yeah, see, where we're at, a lot of guys, they'll buy 40 acres, 36 of it's tillable. Well, I don't need the four acres of wood, so they'll just dump that off. Somebody will drop a modular in and build yeah. a shed. And wait. I mean, there's houses everywhere where we yeah. live. Huh. I mean – yeah. That's a decent way to finance a farm. Do you yeah, get there's a lot of that goes that. Until it comes around later on and right. said place gets sold off to somebody you didn't sell it yeah. to, and they're not the most friendly neighbor. And then all and of a sudden you, you know, killed their trees or yeah, their bees next thing you know, or you're in some yeah. sort of battle with them yep. on the ground that you owned that looking back you could have paid for. Yep. You know, and now your kid needs a place to build a house and you yeah. sold it off. Yeah. So. I would say where we're at, you could hit a house every half mile. Really? Yeah. Okay. Pretty easy. I mean, yeah. So... Uh, uh, as we wrap up, guys, I got one more question for you. Is is uh, you, you're just known for shenanigans? Last time I saw you, you stole a fent tractor or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> What's the shenanigan today? Like you got a sneak peek? I'm not sure yet. Uh, I guess we'll see who drags me into their booth. Is he going to steal the drone? Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not sure. Surprised you didn't get invited to the Gleaner birthday party last night. Yeah, yeah, you'd have thought I would have. <laughs> yeah, you'd have thought. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't get the memo. Yeah, that's pretty good. Well, the question we've been asking all of our guests this time of year is, what do you like most about being a farmer, or what do you like most about farmers? Um, I think just from being all over the U.S., you know, which my situation is a little different. I've got to meet so many people. It truly is like a big family. I mean, I, you know, every person that I've met almost, they come up and they're just so easy to talk to. It's, it's, you honestly feel like you've known them forever, you know, and you've, you've never met them before. So I think it's, it's just because everybody can, can relate so easy to each other. It, it does kind of feel like one big family. You know, you, we're all in competition with each other. But by the same token, you know, if you ask me about my herbicide program or whatever, I'm going to tell you. Whereas if you go to two other competing businesses, they're not telling each other anything. Right. But farmers, 
give them two beers and they'll tell each other everything they, there is to know about their place and how they're doing it, you know, which may or may not benefit you, but they'll try. I think that's been a benefit. I think Tony and I talked about this in the early TikTok days of how we're almost closer than the person that's 10 miles or yeah. five yep. miles yep. down the road because we're a little bit more willing to share. Yeah. yeah. And that's been a huge thing for social media for me anyway. Yeah. I mean, you kind of learn there's a lot, a lot of ways to skin the cat. Yeah. Right. You can farm in so many different ways that work. And, you know, beforehand you thought, well, this is how grandpa did it. That's how I got to do it. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. That is. Well, gentlemen, thanks for starting your day off with us. This is ex- it was, yeah. it was a lot of fun. Yeah. We had a yeah. huge crowd for you, so I'm glad that they turned out. <laughs> yeah. uh, but outside of that, I hope you have a lot of fun and they don't stick you down in a trench out in the field demonstrations behind a tile plow. But who knows? We'll uh, do whatever. We don't care. Either that or when you're ready to launch that presidential campaign, I think our listeners are ready to help. Yeah. Yep. That's, except my, my campaign's going to be backwards. I'm going to go shake babies and kiss hands. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Corey, on that sentiment, what do you say? Crack a bush light. You deserve it. <laughs>